Hey guys, what's up? It's me, TSP Rough Chica. So I've been doing some research here. I wanted to talk about this congresswoman. Who, it's a congresswoman. I mean, so you got to take that seriously. She, you know, her reputation is really on the line here. But I want you guys to listen to what she has to say. I find this very interesting, actually. What does that term? Is this something that bends time and space? What is, What are you getting at? I think that Grush, when I asked, when I had talked to him on whether these were specifically extraterrestrials or alien in origin, he said interdimensional. He refused to um, address, use certain terms, and I think that's incredibly important because I think that that's really the question we're all wanting to know, right? And so I'm. I'm actually going to have a sit-down conversation with him and ask him to come back and talk to us directly because it seems that we are getting more information from the source than going into a skiff and then not being able to tell you guys what. Is this so, guys? Um, it's interesting what she has to say. She's talking about, I believe, it, the name is uh, David Grish or something like this. I have to find out. But um, he testified in Congress. And he was one that worked, I believe, in the intelligence uh, agency. I'm not sure exactly. I'm pretty sure it was uh, in the military, actually. I have to look up his uh, credentials again. It's been a while since I've seen it. But Mission exclusive, David Grush, an Air Force veteran, former member of that task force, and veteran of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, is formally blowing the whistle on secrets he says no one has ever shared publicly before. You are one of the most trusted former intelligence officials in the U.S. defense and intelligence establishment. Yes, I was. You were trusted with the most intimate secrets. Yes. Grush sitting down with award-winning investigative journalist Ross Coulthart, who's reporting for News Nation and has spent years reporting on the UFO question. What conclusion did you come to at the end of your time on the UAP task force? Uh, the UAP task force was refused access to um, a broad crash retrieval program. When you say crash retrieval, what do you mean? Uh, these are retrieving non-human origin uh, technical vehicles, you know, call it spacecraft if you will. Did mention anything? So, you know what, what, what uh, really gets me is that He's a very high-ranking uh, official himself, and so is the congresswoman. And there's more and more people like this coming out every single day. And, uh, you know, I don't know how much people understand about the world around us and the environment that we live in. And to understand it really uh, in depth is one of the reasons I started studying physics at Arizona State University. I had to transfer. I was at City Tech, but then, you know, I had my own. Uh, some injuries I had to deal with for a while. I got right back in and got a, a great school uh, that's highly ranked in physics up there with Caltech and MIT has some big laureates uh, there that, uh, that still give lectures and stuff there. But I did that purposely to understand all these, what they call uh, either um, abstract or uh, interdimensional whatever the word is that you want to call it some people use uh, lesser uh, lesser forms of uh, expressions or uh, adjectives when they talk about these things and they say lesser in a derogatory manner so I try not to do that because that's you know I, I believe that if you try to understand something uh, on a level not just from you know faith-based but going into the scientific realm as well. And that's why I think studying physics is extremely important. Some people have actual experiences like myself. I've also had that as a child. So that uh, experience I had as a kid makes me want to understand this on many different levels. So this is very exciting for people like me and other people around the world. And those of you who are naysayers or whatever the case may be, skeptics, look, uh, I don't mind a healthy debate or discussion, but when people start to become condescending and uh, derogatory in their remarks, I really don't appreciate it. That's like, that's like the person that's always negative and always has negative things to say. If you 
if you don't see their way and that's called being opinionated and nobody wants to be around people that you know have this attitude i don't so i try not to be either i do have a sense of humor uh, uh, however i love to laugh and joke that may be misinterpreted as uh demeaning in some way to some people but you know what f them no, i'm just kidding <laughs> all right let's get back to this craft from another species we do yeah how many quite a number you're kidding no I thought it was totally nuts, and I thought at first I was being deceived, it was a ruse. People started confiding in me, they approached me. I have plenty of current and former senior intelligence officers that came to me, many of which I knew almost my whole career, that confided in me they were a part of a program, they named the program, I've never heard of it, and they, they told me, based on their oral testimony, um, and they provided me documents and other, other proof, that there was in fact a program that the UAP task force was uh, not read into. Grush alleges the US government has recovered non-human craft for decades. He's filed a whistleblower complaint saying he gave what he calls the classified proof to Congress and the intelligence community inspector general. News Nation has confirmed David Grush's credentials and resume. We've not seen or verified the alleged proof he says he's provided to investigators. He says he can't Okay, so just kind of looking over it there, there was no kind of terminology read into. So, everything that you're hearing right now is extremely fascinating to me because uh, this guy, like I said, and that congresswoman are both, you know, these people are both putting their reputation on the line, guys, and that's a lot to do, you know. Uh, you know, there's so many different aspects of this that we can look at. It could be, like he said, all ruse. You know, it could be some psychological, you know, some psyop, you know, uh, tactic that they're using for the public. God knows what this really is, but all you have to do is you have to think like this as well, is that if they're broadcasting this on a medium that goes around the globe in the entire world, it has to be important because the only other thing that they do that they broadcast is anything that makes money how much money are these guys making for doing this and weigh the reputation of everything that worked for it i mean in their lives being a congresswoman being uh an official in the united states uh, air force and working for the uh, uh military intelligence uh you have to ask yourself you know like what's really going on here um if you don't understand the implications involved that's okay uh given time i think everybody's gonna sort of understand that in some form or another it may not be to the level where some some of us are like jeremy corbell uh he's uh renowned now for doing ufo research and uh, getting people like Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar was one of the first whistleblowers. I remember that as a kid in the 80s. I remember being on you know, on my street in Houston, Texas with my friends and like hearing this news and like, hey, is this real? You know, is this guy for real? And he was right there, I believe, right in Houston as well. And uh, it was so fascinating when I first heard uh, Bob Lazar speak and you know this is going back you know in 1984 85 or, or, or somewhere around there and uh you know this is before the internet so the, well, all we had really was the news to rely on and uh you know i guess you know there's some things that uh are just very hard to believe you know but there were some interesting things that uh bob lazar spoke of which i find fascinating as well because he spoke about the element 115 which we find out is actually something real i mean that has to blow your mind in some way well here you know here we are with jeremy corbell uh um he's being interviewed uh by larry king he's sitting right next to jeremy corbell and you know you have the conversation that i've heard since i was a kid that's happening right now when we have more technology and uh, we have the internet, you know, and this is just fascinating. And it's uh, for people like me that grew up when this guy came out, uh, Bob Lazar, 
This just blows my mind. Let's hear what they have to say. Element 115. Element 115 is a, a super heavy element. It's something that we only, only just recently synthesized. We only made four atoms of it. But um, the craft uses larger quantities of it, 223 gram little triangles of it. But it's a unique element. When it's exposed to radiation, it produces its own gravitational field, its own anti-gravitational field. And it's what's used to lift and propel the craft and create distortions around it. It's a... It's an amazing material, and it's certainly nothing that occurs here or naturally. And it can be weaponized, and that's kind of the issue here. If this story is all true, that can be weaponized. Absolutely. Never miss a beat. Subscribe to Larry King now and watch new episodes. Guys, uh, this blew my mind. I don't know if you know the that uh, Bob Lazar himself is a scientist. That's why he was originally hired to work in uh, Area 51. Now, I believe everything that he's saying. Because when he came out, he was frantic. I mean, you could see that that everything, you know, that, that he was just not sure what to do, if he was going to live. Uh, he went through this whole phase that, that he kind of just lost his mind. And I can relate with that idea as well. But, you know, it, it, it's, you know, great seeing him now, decades later, and they do have an element 115. He it's either he predicted it or he was actually working on it back then. One of the two, okay? Well, one of the two has to be true because we have it today. Now he's talking about it being weaponized. And we know that whatever government has it, most likely it's the United States government he worked for in Area 51. But they were the ones that were able to, uh, I guess, uh, reverse engineer this vehicle, this uh alien uh, vehicle, alien spacecraft, and to bring that out, you know, for him, uh, Bob Lazar, to take the chance to bring that out to the public and say, hey, look, we're being lied to. This is what's going on. And, uh, you know, it reminds me a lot of what Edward Snowden did most recently. And uh, kind of like, you know, he is a whistleblower, but some, some people here that are very patriotic uh, kind of lose the idea of of the people having being or being exploited and they have what i call the slave mentality it's kind of like what malcolm x said about house negroes you know <laughs> and i think that that this is what he's talking about is like you know he's saying hey people listen you're being exploited by the government this is what's going on and it has nothing to do with i don't know anybody in the government personally uh i don't know if they're good or bad people i don't know if their job is to keep us in the dark I don't know, but I would love to be in the know like everyone else. Say, hey, look, if there are other beings out there, why not? Why not tell us and let us know, you know? Because every time the government hides something, that means there's always something more sinister behind it. They've had a history of doing this. You know, like as they stated before, there were uh, so many things that you could look back and say that were horrific. And when I say horrific, I mean, you know, exactly that word. I mean, it's terrifying some of the things that they've discovered over the years. And what these people, the power that they have is just uh, disgusting at this point. And, you know, it reminds me of the 1984 George Orwell. You know, this guy was brilliant by uh, mapping this down and speaking about it. And if you guys haven't heard of Noam Chomsky, uh, I don't know if he believes in UFOs or not, but the guy is, you know, a, a brilliant man. Uh, he, he was able to, uh, I, I believe he was a speech pathologist, and uh, he was able to really break down uh, a lot of the things that the, the way, the expressions in what the United States uh, media uses uh, in order to keep people in the dark as well. So he was able to basically read between the lines, guys. That's basically what Noam Chomsky did. Uh, if you don't know who Noam Chomsky is, you guys got to look him up and uh, try and put these things together. You know, these I don't believe that all these people are bad people. I believe that they uh, instinctively wanted to help everyone else to say, hey, look, look what's going on. Check this out. Um, and even if they, you know, I, I, I forgive all people because we're humans. We're going to make mistakes. Everyone is. 
those people who want to be judge, uh, jury, and executioner, those are the people who are the most dangerous on the planet. You know, once they get to the point of wanting to commit violence, you have to be aware of them. And there are a lot of them out there. They're the ones that formed this government. They're, you know, it's the government that had that power. Why do, why do they have such, you know, why, do, why are we in such uh, odds with so many other countries out there? It's not because those countries are bad. And, you know, it's just that people are greedy. And that's what it comes down to. So now we have something so grand, uh, you know, so mysterious, so mind-boggling, uh, so intriguing in so many different ways that that you ex you would expect that why would you have to whistleblow when they could just say hey look we've got this technology and uh it's out there it means that there are other beings that live amongst us that in the stars or here on earth they've been visiting for thousands of years just like they're saying ancient aliens and maybe we have ancient alien dna inside of us there's a lot of dna that's unaccounted for you know so this gives credibility to so many different things in my mind but guys, I'll be making more videos in the future, so please hit that like button and subscribe because I have not hit 500 subscribers yet. I'm without work. Uh, there's a story behind why I'm without work, and it's part of the reason why I can appreciate Bob Lazar, Edward Snowden, uh, even Jeremy Corbell, and uh, you know, uh, Mr. Griff, you know, uh, the uh, Air Force. Uh, military intelligence uh, guy that was just there and that congresswoman i forgot her name now but there's so many people that i can respect because they're putting their reputation on the line and if you have never had anything taken away from you in life like i have and many others like in bob lazar's case his life got turned upside down by the government i know what that feels like in some ways you know when a group of powerful people want to harm you or anyone else they can do it you know this is the name of the game that they play but I do believe in God. I do believe there's a higher power. And uh, I'm not going to throw a label on God either. I just believe that there is a supreme force that I call God. Uh, I believe that God is one in many. I mean, and if it is God, that means the entire creation is God, is what I'm saying. But uh, guys, I'll break that down even further in another video. But I hope that you really appreciate the work that I do. And please hit that like and subscribe button. That will help me eventually at my age of 53 for the last 20 years. I'll give you a little hint of some of the bullshit I had to go through. After 9-11, I had to suffer for no reason at all. And uh, it's just, you know, it's been, been a real burden, of, you know, a cross on my back. <laughs> you know, like I had to bear that weight. But I understand. And uh, I hope that you guys will help support me in my endeavors. And this is also going to help me to get my degree in physics. You know, I've been very sick and... Uh, I'll do a video on that at some point what has happened to me in the last 20 years you guys might want to know about this but you'll see all the types of exploitation and different things that people of power can do to a person but I'm a strong individual and God made me this way and I plan on uh, doing a lot more great wonderful stuff guys so hang in there I'll see you in the next video and uh, like I said please hit that like and subscribe button and uh, watch out for my next video <laughs>